Hey guys, here working on a Willys Jeep motor. It's a L134, commonly referred to as the Go Devil engine. And what we're doing is uh, we are installing new valve guides. And if you want to come here and take a look into this hole right here, you can see this is the new valve guide and it presses into here. Nina, if you can point the camera way down in there. There you go. So we're gonna insert this valve guide into that hole. But first, I'm gonna have to sand the inside of the bore because the last time I tried to do this, the way that you install these is with a very specific valve guide driver. Um, you can get these from Goodman Tools, they kind of specialize in head um, tools and like drivers and, and doing, you know, valve jobs and things like that. That's the type of stuff they specialize in, reamers and, and uh, knurlers, things like that. But you can buy these uh, online um, from their website. They're very good, fast shipping. But anyways, this drives into that bore and that bore is a little bit rough. So that's why I broke this driving it in. It just it just needs a little bit of the uh, rust and crud cleaned off of it so that we can grab that in. So I'm going to go ahead and get that cleaned up and then uh, our next video we'll go ahead and show a picture of me driving that uh, valve guide in. Alright, thanks guys. Alright, so the way I'm going to clean this, I've taken a piece of 1200 grit sandpaper. 1200 is probably a little bit um, light, but I don't really want to cause any changes to the geometry here I just want to get the uh, the rust off so that it drives in earlier so I just I just tore a strip of this off um, long style so when I was a kid they used to call that hot dog style so I tore a, a long piece a long strip of this 1200 grit paper off just tore it by hand and uh, then I threaded it through and you can see I'm actually going all the way through the bottom here and I'm using this just kind of like I'm flossing and I'm using that sandpaper to uh, clean up that bore. And you can see the sandpaper, it's got some rust on it. Um, that's just stuff we're trying to get off and, and get this, uh, this bore. Of course, what I'll do next is I'll clean this really well with some brake clean just to make sure that we don't leave any abrasive or anything like that in the bore because that would really cause a problem trying to drive that new valve guide in. Um, but once we're done, that'll be cleaned up and hopefully this new valve guide which I put in the fridge, um, actually the freezer overnight to just shrink it a little bit. And then the next thing I'll do is I'll take this propane torch and I'll actually apply some heat to this um, valve guide bore. The thought is that we'll expand that a little bit with the heat. We'll shrink this a little bit with the um, freezer. And then by cleaning this bore up, that should drive in much, much easier. And I will not find myself with a uh, broken valve guide when I install the new valve guides in it. Alright, that's it guys. Thanks. So as soon as we're done getting this um, cleaned up, we will uh, put this back in the freezer for a few hours, let it get you know good and cold, and we'll do part two and we'll actually show driving this in. Um, and then after this is driven in, um, we'll have this block ready to take to the machine shop because one thing that's very important is once you have um, valve guides replaced, the uh, the valve and Nina, if you can if you can tilt up here, this happens to be the number four exhaust valve. Um, let me grab an intake valve real quick so I can show you what's going on. But once you uh, replace these valve guides, you have to cut new valve seats because this valve is uh, you know geometrically centered on that valve guide. So even though this has what appears to be a nice, um, good three-angle valve jobs on it, because we replaced the valve guides in here, um, we then need to recut these seats. And these seats are all hardened except for these two. I don't know why, but at some point in time in the life of this block, um, all of the valve seats were replaced with hardened valve seats except these two exhaust valves. And of course the exhaust valves are the ones that need the hardened seats the most um, because that's where most of the erosion of your valves happens 
um, as the welding happens, you know, between the exhaust valve and the uh, the valve seat when you use uh, unleaded fuel. Um, so some some people claim I've seen engines that did not have hardened valve seats and ran fine with unleaded fuel. I think it has a lot to do with how much load that engine sees. Um, on a small 60 horsepower engine like this, it probably does not matter. Um, this this engine probably would do just fine without hardened seats. Um, but we've already got you know. Um, six of the eight done so we'll go ahead and have and have the other two done and we've got to recut valve seats anyways uh, for these uh, for these exhaust valves um, but yeah now that we've got new guides in and hopefully this one goes in without a uh, issue we'll send this off to the machine shop to have the hardened seats put in on the exhaust valves for cylinders two and three and then we'll have new valve seats uh, cut for all these valves so these nice brand new stainless steel valves will seal up perfectly um, and then the next video um, after driving this valve in, uh, valve guide in, will be um, us probably assembling the valve train, getting the valves and the springs and the lifters and the keepers and the camshaft in. But that's it for now, guys. Thanks.